It's late July 2019 and this is a status update on my true potato seed trial plot. I did take some pictures earlier this season when things actually looked good. Because of trying to actually select varieties that work well in my climate under my conditions, I didn't spray these. Now a lot of what this video is going to be about is how my climate is basically a broiling hell for potatoes and how not spraying potatoes here is basically a recipe for not getting potatoes. But there's more to it than that, which we'll get into over the course of this video. As we walk down the row here, I'll explain the process. The row here is about 10 feet wide. It's 100 feet long. This winter, I put in about eight cubic yards of compost and then had that tilled in in April of this year. Uh, potatoes were planted in mid-April, were covered once to protect from frost, uh, also in April, and then after that they were uncovered for the season. Initially, early on this year, we had extremely abundant rainfall to the point where portions of this bed were underwater for days at a time on multiple occasions. However, the last few weeks have been fairly dry, although not extremely droughty. You can see the, the grass. Things are actually fairly lush here, but potatoes are really not a big fan of heat and drought, particularly anything above 80 or 85 degrees Fahrenheit is not really to their liking. Little digression, this is a big bed of skirret flowering. So anybody out there who's a skirret fan, I have lots of skirret and doing a lot of messing around with skirret. So the potatoes were hilled up at least three or four times until I essentially couldn't hill them anymore. And then I collected grass clippings and piled grass clippings up on the outsides. And you can kind of see here how I did that. You can see the grass clippings. The center of the whole bed here is actually miscanthus mulch, which is my usual garden path mulch. It's chopped miscanthus grass of various species of varieties. So that's basically how the bed was done. There's no irrigation out here and I haven't watered anything. I haven't sprayed anything. And I haven't fertilized or limed anything. Although, I mean, the enormous addition of compost in effect added a lot of fertilizer. And then of course the green grass clippings did add some nitrogen, I'm sure. Looking at the bed from this view, on the right hand side, that whole row are tetraploid potatoes, which is what commercial potatoes typically are. The left hand side is diploid potatoes. The very extreme difference in how these two types of potatoes have fared, which is not entirely unforeseen or unexpected. The diploids on the left have been extremely ravaged by Colorado potato beetles, heat and drought and the vast majority of them are essentially defoliated and I'd say a good half of them are dead outright or at least dormant. I don't think they're dead, they're just dormant. So let's have a look at some of that. Okay, this little bit of diploid potatoes is Magic Dragons, which is a Tom Wagner variety. And I have grown Magic Dragons for years and I can't say I've ever gotten any meaningful amount of potatoes off of it. They hate our climate, but to be a farmer, you have to be an eternal idiotic optimist. So that is almost totally defoliated, but not completely dormant yet, loaded with potato beetles. The next diploid variety is tree leaves mix, and this one is pretty much dormant, totally defoliated by beetles, really not enjoying the heat at all, and it's really sad. Actually, I misspoke. This variety, the second diploid variety in the row is Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie, that's also a Tom Wagner variety. The third variety in this diploid row is tree leaves mix. I think that's a cultivariable variety, but I'm not positive. This one is doing a little better, at least this particular plant is, 
but in general, it's pretty much dormant as well, suffering pretty hard. That's tree leaves mix. Fourth variety in the diploid row, I got labeled as unknown diploid. I don't know who originated that seed or what the story is there, but that's what the seed packet said. Unknown diploid is one of the better diploids. It's not totally defoliated. It's not totally dormant. Yeah, it looks really rough. It's not doing well, but compared to the other diploids, it still has some green foliage. It's still photosynthesizing. So, hey, that's great. That's one of the best ones so far. The next diploid in the row is Carreta Maria. It's supposed to be a great tasting potato, but it's pretty much totally defoliated. Some of these here really look terrible. I mean, they're totally dormant, totally defoliated. Uh, and this is basically as bad as it gets as far as uh, the uh, diploid potatoes. Next variety is Cthulhu's Jockstrap. And some of them are doing pretty good. Some are pretty terrible. It's definitely variable. There's one here that is pretty decent looking as far as the diploids go. There's other ones in the row that are basically defoliated or dormant already. Uh, this one seems to be kind of variable in how it's responded. I mean, there's some pretty decent ones here, and this is a really sunny spot, so, and not really dry spot, so that one might have some winners and some total losers too. Now the final diploid one in the row is another block of Carreta Amaria. So interestingly enough, these ones are in full sun. The previous block was in partial shade underneath a tree, and these are definitely doing better. Uh, some of them, like at the end of the row here, I mean, this is pretty terrible. It's just about completely dead, defoliated from potato beetles. But then there's some more going back here that aren't looking too bad. And there's some real interesting, almost purple foliaged ones. So we'll see how that works out. Let's take a look at the tetraploid varieties. All right, tetraploid potato varieties. The first one in the row is Bountiful from Joseph Lofthouse. And that one is nearly totally defoliated. Some of the plants look a little better than others, uh, but as far as Varieties go, it's been pretty heavily hit by potato beetles, and it seems to be really struggling in the heat. The next tetraploid variety is uh, one of two different strains of Shetland Black that I grew this year, and this has done pretty well. There's definitely potato beetles on here. They've definitely damaged them, but there's a few here that are still trying to flower. It still has a lot of foliage. It's pretty decent. It's a lot of berry set, really vigorous vines. Not too bad considering, all things considered, it's not, it's not too bad actually. So the next variety in the tetraploid seed strains is a Katahdin seed strain. That one's been hit pretty hard by the beetles and the heat, although I'd say it's not as bad as, you know, a lot of the diploids are, but it's worse than the Shetland black ones and there's no berries to speak of on this variety. Okay, the final tetraploid one that I have, it's a different strain of the Shetland Black, and this one's been the winner of the year. Tons of berries, really aggressive vines, really nice looking plants, very little beetle damage. Doesn't matter whether it's under a tree or whether it's in full sun or what, this thing is doing pretty well. It's holding up pretty good. So. This is definitely one of the better of the tetraploid ones. Although if you look close, I'm sure you can see there's beetles on these. And these are gonna go down before, before too terribly long. So a few general thoughts as we look over this miserable looking potato row. I've gone through today and I've marked some of the plants for more resistance to beetles, heat, drought, etc. So that when I finally harvest them, I don't want to save necessarily for replanting anything that has uh, terrible beetle resistance. But another greater theme here is that if you're watching this, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that I'm one of the warmest climate persons who's trying to do anything with true potato seed. And I have messed around with them for years, although not in a huge scale like this year. This year I put out 200 plants. and. I think most everybody else working with this is in a much cooler climate, particularly cooler summer, cooler nights. And I don't think most people are spraying, 
but they're not having this kind of a deal. Uh, the guy I got these seeds from, Oxbow Farm, you know, I've watched his videos pretty extensively about his whole process, and he gets beetles and doesn't spray, and they don't defoliate the plants, it seems like. It seems like it's just an incidental thing. And I think that would be the case here, too, if the plants had more vigor. But at this point, the plants are so brutalized by the heat and the drought, the hot nights and the burning sun that they're suffering so greatly that they can't outgrow the potato beetles. And on the ones that have the least amount of resistance to heat and drought, the potato beetles completely defoliate them and that's it. So that has to severely impact the yield. I mean, it's just terrible basically. But on the other hand, I don't want to spray these things because then I can't possibly select for beetle resistance. So I'm kind of stuck. I still think I'll get some potatoes this year. I just have to hope that the weather breaks. Uh, it's July, and I think we're looking at having 15 or 16 days over 90 degrees Fahrenheit here, and we've had a couple days over 100. Uh, it's, it's hot. I generally don't make videos in the hot part of the day. Uh, the sun here is so intense that I can't see my screen, so I apologize in advance if it seems like I've gone blind or crazy and I don't know where I'm pointing this thing. I am basically filming this blind. I can't see the screen at all. Even if I try to hold my hand up or put a hat on, the sun here is just unbelievable. And it's midday here. Um, just un incredible. So that might also help to get a sense of like what we're dealing with here. The other Final thought though is if I do select some potatoes, I mean, I think I have potential here to select potatoes that are very resistant to heat and drought, which is an excellent thing to be selecting for. So maybe I'm in a very fortunate position and I'm also in a position to you know, select for a really great insect tolerance. Disease is not usually much of an issue here. Um, it's too hot and dry, I think, at the disease times. I've never seen disease like that. It's just heat straight up and then insects. Uh, the other thing is, you know, I know there's people who are concerned about doing this true potato seed selection and getting too many varieties that, you know, go until frost. Potatoes don't go until frost here for me. That's an unimaginable thing. Maybe I'll come back and these potatoes are gonna bounce back, but unless it rapidly cools down and we get tons of rain, the most realistic thing is even these tetraploid ones in another two or three weeks are going to all be done. I mean, potatoes are basically done here by mid-August. It just gets too hot, too dry, and the bugs get ahead of them, and that's it. Even if you spray them, and I have sprayed them in previous years, I mean, you really can't get them to go until frost. That's just not going to happen here. So once again, I could potentially look at that as a blessing in disguise. It might be very fortunate that I actually get these potatoes to shut down really early. So if I have a variety that produces well, you know, I can start to select maybe for some early varieties as opposed to ultra late ones, going by tuber weight as a selection criteria. So my final little potato shot here is I was sent some tubers from Oxbow Farm this year, which is great. And these are selected tubers from his true potato seed selection program and I will say that out of all of the potatoes that I've grown this year every variety he sent me is the most vigorous the most heat tolerant and the most potato beetle resistant not to say they don't get them they are getting them but these are extremely vigorous varieties eh, maybe this one here is not so vigorous but still better than all the seedling varieties I have some of these varieties are just completely crazy uh, this one is Yog Shoggoth, and it's just like a crazy vigorous variety. It is getting chomped by the beetles, but man, it's like this thing is so vigorous that it's just growing faster than the beetles can chomp it. And that's sort of my point before. If you can select for enough vigor and enough heat tolerance, like this variety here, it's not growing faster than the beetles can eat it. You need to have a variety that will grow so fast that it puts out new foliage faster than the beetles eat it off. So these varieties from Oxbow are really good. I'm not gonna dig through this mess and try to find all the names of all of them, but I've been pretty pleased with these. So 
I would be hopeful that after a few years of my selection on my end, I can start to get some stuff like this. Uh, and if you're looking at this god-awful bed here, it's basically a bed of squash and pumpkins. And I had this really great idea to do this cover crop after the squash and pumpkins were established. And it's a mix of summer pollinator and summer solar. And all that actually is here, well, there's a little bit of other stuff, but it's supposed to be millet, buckwheat, sunflower, sun hemp, and cow peas. Basically, it's millet and buckwheat. And there's a little bit of sunflowers and a little bit of cow peas, and I haven't seen any sun hemp. Um, and the millet's just gone absolutely crazy in here. And it's a little bit disturbing to me how this uh, worked out. I didn't expect it to work this way, but it did. So uh, on the bright side, most of the squash, I think, doesn't really care. It's starting to spread over into my corn patch and into the grass and whatever. The squash is gonna be fine, but uh, this will provide a lot of biomass. I guess when it frosts, this stuff will all die and it'll all get tilled in and that'll be great, but hopefully it doesn't seed a bunch into here because that's gonna be a mess. I think it's about to start to seed, so it's another little digression. Anyway, thanks for watching the potato update. It's growing potatoes in hell. It's hot as, well, you know what? It's hot as whatever you want it to be. It's really hot here. So thanks for watching. Wish me luck on getting a good potato harvest.